Hey, my name is Kelly and welcome to our online service. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know about our in-person Sunday morning service at 1030 a.m. If you are ever in our area, we would love for you to come and worship with us. But today, let us know where you're watching from. We love reading all the comments. I'm super excited for you to hear today's message, so let's jump right in. Last week, we, we talked about the word impact. I had shared with you guys, I really felt like God gave me a word for the year, and I sometimes think that's cheesy, but God said, no, this isn't cheesy, this is for real. And the more I've thought about this word impact being the kind of the word that I think that God was showing me for this year, I really, it's become something that I'm realizing that it's a word just for this church. And it's something that I'm really taking deep into everything that we're doing and taking that verbiage and making it really an internal verbiage that we have. It's just the awareness of the impact that we are called to make and the awareness of the impact that we are capable of making and called to make when we partner with God. And so impact has really been our word. And then there's this scripture that God has been showing me. And it's, a, it's about mindsets. And last week, one of the things that I said in the service was our, our external impact comes from an internal mindset. The internal mindset we have will decide the external impact we will have in our, in our life. And, and truth be known, we're all making an impact somewhere right now. You already made an impact with every discussion, every conversation you had today. Ladies, moms, you had an impact on your husband and your children. The question is, was that impact the impact that you wanted to make? Was that impact the impact that we wanted to have in the conversations we had today? And like I said, that impact really comes from internal mindsets that we have, internal mindsets that we carry. And there's the scripture that God's kind of given me for the, for the past few weeks I've been sitting on. And it's out of Philippians chapter two and verse Verse five, and it says, and consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. And that's something I've really been taking into my daily routine now is when I get into situations where maybe there's frustration or maybe I'm getting annoyed, I stop for a minute and I go, okay, God, hold on. What's your motivation in this moment, God? Let me, let me have your mindset. And today, I kind of wanted to really dig a little bit deeper into mindsets. There's about 1,000 different directions this message could go, and I kind of feel like I have a little bit of a buffet in here, but I'm excited about this message and what God's been showing me. And, and I, and I want to start off by telling kind of a, a short little story about the Old Testament, something going on. Back in the Old Testament, you had the Israelites, and they were... God's chosen people and, and God's chosen people were always going through these lands and they were trying to get back to their home and their land. And in the middle of that, there were different people in their land and people that they would fight with. And one of those people were the, the Philistines and the Philistines always kind of overrode everything that the Israelites did. They kind of had a monopoly on the economy there, on the community there. In fact, the Israelites at times didn't even have weapons. And if they did have weapons, they would actually have to go to Philistine territory just to get their weapons sharpened because they didn't even have the building and resources to be able to do that. So let's just say the Philistines in the Israelites' mind were these gigantic bullies that they were constantly coming into conflict with. And anytime they needed to go somewhere else and they would move their people or go into a different area to try to develop the area and then have a different economy, the Philistines would block them. It seems like the Philistines were always in their way. And so the king of the Israelites at this time was King Saul, and he had a son by the name of Jonathan, and Jonathan was actually best friends with David, who we're actually gonna talk about a little bit more today, but Jonathan and David were best friends, and Jonathan was always trying to help the Israelites and help his dad do, do the right thing, and so there's a moment here that I wanna talk about this morning, and they are actually blocked again by the Philistines. Um, king Saul and his men are kind of trapped on one side, and, and Jonathan is there, and, and Jonathan has this great idea, and here's where I want to take you this morning to 1 Samuel. This is 1 Samuel uh, chapter 14, and it says, one day Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come on, let's go over to where the Philistines have their outpost. But Jonathan didn't tell his father where he was going. No one even realized that Jonathan had left the Israelite camp. To reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to go down between two rocky cliffs that were called Bozes and Shinna. The cliff on the north was in front of Michmash, and the one on the south was in front of Geba. Let's go across the outpost to let's go across to the outpost of those pagans, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Perhaps 
The Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle, whether he has many warriors or only a few. The other day, God woke me up with that scripture, perhaps the Lord will fight on our behalf. Maybe, just maybe, the Lord is going to fight on our behalf. I think another word that I kind of questions around in my mind sometimes is, what if? So everybody say, perhaps. Everybody say, maybe. maybe. Everybody say, what if? And what if is actually gonna be the title of today's message. What if? And so if you guys will pray with me this morning, God, we just come to you today. God, just open up our hearts. Holy Spirit, like we sing about this morning, God, you are welcome in this place. And God, I'm asking that you do a work in all of us today. Open up our hearts to receive from you. God, we're coming into this place. We all have different needs. We all have different things that we're going through in our life. But God, you know those needs better than anything. And so God, we lay our, our needs at your feet. God, we bring them to the altar, God, and just lay those needs down before your feet. And in exchange, God, we ask that you would fill us up. God, fill Fill us up with your mindsets, God. Fill us up with your motivations, God. Don't let us leave here in this place without transformation and change. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Well, like I said, this morning we're talking about impact. And that word, perhaps. The, the what if. And I was listening to someone the other day and they said, you know, perhaps, maybe, and what if. Those might just be the most powerful phrases in the universe. And I begin to think about that word, what if. What if is, is, is a rather powerful blank that we get to fill in. What, in it, what if is the blank that oftentimes I think sometimes it can be dangerous because sometimes we start filling the blank for what if with our past. What if I wouldn't have done that? What if I wouldn't have gone to college there? What if I wouldn't have broken up with my childhood sweetheart? What if, what if, or what if? And I think sometimes we live in our lives filling in the blank from the past, the, the blank of what if. I think sometimes there's the question, what if? And maybe it's something moving towards the future, but maybe in a negative way. What if I do this and this happens? What if I say this and this happens? What if I go there and this happens? Anybody ask yourself that question one time and seem to fill in the blank? I often find myself doing the what ifs. And in many conversations I talk to people, I find a lot of what if? What if 2021 is a lot like 2020 and I end up losing my job or I can't provide for my family, right? What if, what if this year I don't get accepted into the, the college I want to go to? What, what if this year I am not recognized for the thing I've been working so hard at? What if, what if, what if, what if I try my best and I, and I fail? What if I give it all I got? What if I make myself vulnerable this time and I get taken advantage of. What if, what if, what if, are you guys with me? The other day I was talking to somebody and we were, they were, they were in a season in their life where they were gonna need to make some decisions and some changes and changes can be scary oftentimes because we don't really know what lies ahead. And in this conversation, they were talking to me that, that if they did this move, what if this happened? And if that happened, what if this happened? And if that happened, what if this happened? Right, have you ever heard this story about if you give a mouse a cookie? Yeah. Right, if you give a mouse a cookie, he's gonna want a glass of milk. Once a glass of milk, he's gonna want here. Right, and I think sometimes we do that with our life. What if I do this and then this happens? And then what if I do this and then this happens? And why is it that it's so easy for us to create this really bad what if narrative instead of changing the what if to what if? What if I did that and this happened? What if because that happened, then this happened? Then what if if that happened, then this happened? You know, they say that faith is believing in the unseen. Faith is believing in the unseen. So then it takes just as much faith to believe a negative what if than it does to have a positive what if. Either way, we don't really know the outcome. And today I wanna challenge you this morning to take some, some personal responsibility and realizing that much of our outcome in our life is designed by the what if that we are asking. What if God and I partner up in this situation and God gets to shine and God gets to have the glory? 
What if God has got something in store for me and God wants to do something amazing in my life? Instead of conscious, always constantly asking ourselves, what if I fail? Maybe the question this year should be, what if I succeed? What if I do that thing that I've been pushing off forever? What if? And I was thinking about a good what if. And a good what if has the power to impact our world. A really good what if. The story we opened this morning when Jonathan and his, and just his armor bearer, they decided to what if. What if today God acts on our behalf and we win this war? So Jonathan and his armor bearer, they climbed up this hill and they went into battle. And just Jonathan and his one men were able to defeat more than 20 of the Philistines. But then right after that moment, the earth began to quake. And there was actually so much confusion that some of the Philistines turned on themselves and actually killed each other. And then some of them ran away in terror. Because the what if that Jonathan had set up their whole tribe for the victory that day. It was a what if that impacted the Israelites. It was a what if that would that day impact the Philistines. It was a good what if. And I think about the Bible. In fact, I brought my big one today, my family Bible today, because this Bible is full of stories that began with what if. What if Noah built an ark that would protect his family and for generations to come? What if, right? What if, what if Moses could lead these people to freedom and lead these children out of slavery into the promised land? What if, what if Joshua fought in the battle of Jericho and would take his people to march around Jericho until the walls came tumbling down? What if, what if Moses and his people ran towards this Red Sea and this sea would part so the people could walk across dry land? What if, what if David could defeat that giant? What if Esther was really called for a time such as this? What if Paul could really take the gospel to all people, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles, to all people all over the world? What, what if Daniel could, by honoring God, God would protect him in this lion's den? All of these what ifs, our Bible is full of what if stories. And I tried to really think of a good biblical example of a story when someone didn't have a, what, a good what if. And they took that good what if and they never did anything with it. And what I found was is that, that, that negative what if that someone never did anything with isn't even in my Bible because there was no story from that what if. There was no impact from that what if. And I think that's something that God is challenging us in this season to do, is really begin to question our what if. Where is our what if leaving it, leading us? Is it leading us into a place of impact? Or is it leading us to a place of comfort or a place of security, a place of safety? Where, where's the what if that we have leading us? And I was thinking about the things that we create in our life and everything that we create in our life two times. Once we create the idea in our mind, the second time we create it's when it's an action. It's at first an internal thought before it's an external action. And I wonder how many things in our life we never get to the second phase because it doesn't start with that first thought. That first what if. What if God did something here? What if God's asking me to do something here? And I think about all the what ifs that have shaped our world. What if their what ifs weren't the good what ifs that they turned out to be, instead they were negative what ifs? What, what if Shakespeare had been too unsure to write? How many things would have never been written? What, what if Einstein had been too tired and too scared and too nervous to, to invent? What, what if Martin Luther King Jr. had been too scared and too what if to have a dream? What if his dream wouldn't work and there'd be no point in even trying? It seemed like that mountain was too great. What if he would have had a negative what if? Instead of saying what if God has called me for such a time as this? What if God is asking me to step into this uncharted territory that I don't know about in this season? It's our what if, guys, that has so much power in our life. And I think sometimes we get so distracted in things that are going on in our lives and the busyness of our day and the narratives that we've created, the narratives that we've known our whole life, the narratives from the past that maybe we've brought into the future. And are we really slowing down to ask ourselves 
what is our what if? What is the blank that we've been filling it in within our lives with? What is that what if? Is that a thought that's leading us into hope and leading us to dream and leading us to do? Or the what if narratives we've created in our life have us stuck in a rut and we're not moving forward And a lot of the conversations I have with people are people that feel stuck in a rut and they're not moving forward. And when I begin to talk to them and encourage them, move forward, take a step, every step, every idea comes with this what if. What if I do that and it doesn't work out? What if I do this and it doesn't happen right? And that what if is a mindset that we are creating in our lives. We're either creating a hope-filled mindset or we're creating a negative and a scared and a fearful mindset of where we're going. And I thought about the the impact that we wanna make and to make a powerful impact, that starts with a powerful mindset. A powerful impact starts with a powerful mindset. And this morning I wanted to share with you one of the scriptures that's really become a life scripture for me. Because when we think about what God's motive was, man, his motive was to empower us. In fact, here's the scripture in Ephesians 3.20, my life scripture. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. That's the answer to the what if. In fact, that's that's where God has more came from. It came from the what if. What if God has called us for more? What if that feeling that sometimes we feel like we're living an unfulfilled life and we don't have a purpose and we don't know where we're going, maybe it's because we don't have the right what if. Maybe the blank was supposed to build with what if God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even ask or imagine according to the power that works in me. What if that's the blank? And I I love this translation from the Passion Translation from the same scripture. It says this, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. What if God wants to outdo your wildest dream? And I think so many times we go, well, he hasn't. Yeah, but have you done anything for him to be able to outdo that? We just sit in neutral all the time waiting for God, but maybe God's waiting on us. Maybe God's waiting on us to find our powerful what if and start making moves towards that what if. But I think it's crazy because I think we live in such a negative mindset and we don't even realize it. Our, our, our world is negative. We, we grow up in negative households maybe, or maybe we have some negative experiences. And before you know it, negativity kind of becomes the norm. You know that clinical research has shown that more than 80% of our thoughts are negative. 80% of our thoughts. And so if 80% of our what ifs are negative, then how are we going to open up and expect God to do immeasurably more than when we ask or think when all of our thoughts and our mindset isn't his mindset, it's a negative one, right? And I was, I was listening to this clinical psychologist who is, who is way smarter than me and she does all this neurological research and data and she was talking about the brain and she was talking about how our mind works and she said that our mind actually has an optimism bias. Our mind is actually wired for positivity. It's wired for positivity, it's wired for optimism. And if you study quantum physics, and that's a big word that James likes to talk about, and I normally don't, but if you study quantum physics inside of our body, you know, we have our body, right? It goes down to our skin, and inside of our body, there's organs, then you keep farther, you have tissue, right? And you go into cells, and then those cells have particles, and then within the particles, there's these tiny, tiny things that's the smallest of everything, and those are wavelengths in our body. And it says that those very wavelengths are actually set to the circuitry of those wavelengths are set for the best position for those wavelengths to function in is when they're inspired by love. 
when they're inspired by hope, we actually have a positivity bias in our body at the cellular level, even smaller that the wavelengths of our body are set because they want to be positive. They want to be full of hope. They want to be full of faith. And when our cells are in that place and our wavelengths are in the place, when they're functioning because of love and because of hope and because of faith in our life, our bodies actually function better. These wavelengths, I can't remember all the names. I think one was gamma and alpha maybe. When these wavelengths are off, things that we could normally do, when these wavelengths are off, we can't even do what we're supposed to do. I think it's the gamma wavelength that helps us focus. How many of you guys feel like sometimes we struggle to focus, right? Just me, okay. Well, but sometimes I struggle to focus. And when I was looking into this study, it says that if your gamma wavelengths are not right, if you have too much gamma, you actually lose your ability to focus. Man, what if one of the reasons we can't even focus on a new what if is because we're so full of the negative thoughts in our life that we can't even get our wavelengths in our body to function how they're supposed to be functioning so we can do what God's asked us to do. Man, there's so much power in our thoughts. There's so much power in the way that we think and the way that we feel because it's all coming from a place of what we allow into our hearts. I think that's why the Bible says to guard your heart because everything that you do flows from it. So when I don't guard my heart and I let in all this negativity, I let in all this frustration, I let in all these things and then I convince myself that I'm just a victim of this life and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm actually, of, actually affecting the core being of my body. I think that's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. The more that we allow ourselves to sit in this negativity and these frustrations with these negative, one, negative what ifs and all this pessimism in our life, of course our life is going to become that. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. And then what she was talking about negativity, she said when you have these negative thoughts, it's not because an injustice has been done and there's nothing you should do, can do about it and you just need to sit here and just take in this negative thought and just push it to the side and say, I'm not even gonna think about it. I'm just gonna do something else. She said when you have a negative thought, it's actually your body sending a warning. In the same measure, when you put your hand on something hot and it begins to burn, that's your body's warning to remove your hand. That's actually what negative negativity in our brain is. Negative thoughts aren't there so we can go and stew on them and hold on to them and just do all these things with them. It's actually signaling in our brain that this is something that we need to do something about in our lives. This is something that we need to create a new what if in our life. And I begin to think about things in my life sometimes, the things that sometimes frustrate me the very most, the things that I feel like I have the most deep burden for and the most frustration for. Maybe those are things in my life that God is asking me to design a what if in my life. Man, what if God has a plan for this situation? Man, what if God is wanting me to move towards this thing instead of moving against this thing? What if the frustration I feel is my heart saying, yes, I need to move towards this thing and I need to create change in this situation? Maybe it's our body signaling us that we haven't created a big enough what if for God to do what only he can do. The what if that God is challenging us to create. And like I said, it's so important that we are creating these mindsets, these positive mindsets. These mindsets are these things that we're setting in our life to say, hey God, do this in my life. This is what I expect. This is how I'm going to live. And the reason why our mindsets are so important is because if we can be intentional about our mindsets, we will create unintentional impacts. In my life all the time, like I said this morning, there's times in my life that I am creating an impact, unintentionally, oftentimes. And that impact can be good, but oftentimes that impact is something negative in my life. I'm creating unintentionally all these negative impacts in the world around me, and I don't wanna live that way. I wanna live in a world that I'm creating positive, healthy impacts. Everyone that comes into contact with me, my family, my friends, my work environment, my school environment, that I'm creating this impact in their lives. But if I'm going to create an impact in the world around me, that comes from me creating an intentional mindset. 
And I, and I love the book of Psalms. I feel like it's a book of intentional mindsets. If you, if you read through, through the Psalms, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's a mindset that puts me back into the place of my shepherd and not wanting for anything. A mindset that I can find in Psalms 91 says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. It's my place of refuge. It's a mindset that says, no matter what goes on, I'm pointing my mindset back to Jesus. He will be the mindset. He will be the author and the finisher of my faith. And when I practice my mindsets and I'm intentional about those mindsets, the ripple effect is I begin being intentional about my impacts. And I was thinking about David as I always do. You know, David's one of my very favorites and he actually wrote a lot of the book of Psalms. And it's fun to look at his writing. Sometimes you can take it and you can compare things going on in his life. And there's times when his mindset gets a little crazy. He's kind of emotional at times as, as I can be as well. I think maybe that's why I like him. And, and some days he's just like, God, this is the worst. <laughs> you haven't seen me. I don't know what's going on. I'll probably die by noon. I hate everything in my life and everyone hates me. And then he'll go, but you are my rock. You are my shield. You are my fortress and you are who I will always put my trust in. David was so intentional about his mindset. And I think he became intentional about his mindset in a time when he could have been intentional about developing a negative mindset. David was a kid that was overlooked by his whole family. His brothers were all seen as the strong ones. His brothers were seen as the fighters. His brothers were seen as the brave, but David was just seen as a shepherd. And while his father would call upon his brothers to go fight wars and take care of their family, he would send David to a field all alone. And that could have been a season where David could allow his mindset to say, I'm a victim in this world. This only happens to me. No one sees me. No one sees how strong I could be, how brave I could be. I'm just never gonna be recognized. I'm always missed. No one's ever looking out for me. But when I go and I find the Psalms of David from this period in his life, there's no Psalms that do that. There's no Psalms when he's allowing himself to get stuck in a, in a funky mindset. His Psalms from this time period of his life are filled with hope. They're filled with the presence of God when people didn't even know what the presence of God was. Here David was sitting among this field finding the presence of God. And the more he was in the presence of God, the more he had that relationship with God, the more he began to take on the mindset of God. The more that the mindset of God became his motivation. And so that unintentional impact that we were talking about became to be a product of fruit in his life that happened all the time. While he was on a hillside learning to play his harp and just watch some sheep, he was developing a mindset in Christ that says, I am strong and I'm a warrior. And so the day that a lion appears, David was able to defeat the lion by hand because the God that lived inside of him was great. And because of that, David had the mindset that he was great. So David learned to fight the lion. It says that David would fight a bear. So of course the impact would be an unintentional the day that he walked onto the battlefield and there was Goliath right there. And again, his brothers mocked him. Even King Saul mocked him for being so small. What would this kid do? But it didn't affect David because David had the what if mindset. And when David looked up at that giant, David says, what if I take down Goliath today? What if, because the God inside of me, all the Israelites are set free today? What if? And that's what's so great about David is David had this, this history with God. So when David went to fight Goliath, it wasn't his first day to say, what if? He had said, what if, many times. He said, what if, the day that he was gonna fight the lion? He said, what if, the day that he fight, fought the bear? But that what if was even predicated by the day he sat on that hill and said, what if I'm called to be in the presence of God? His what if started small and because his what if started small, his impact started to be really, really great. And David began to have this, this history with God, this history of God that says every time my mindset is his mindset, I have an impact on the world around me. And I think sometimes we look around us and we look at people in our lives that maybe have these awesome Goliath stories and we go, I wanna have the same what if, but it's just too big for me to even fathom. 
David's what if didn't start that day on Goliath. David's what if started that day on a hillside when he said, what if the creator of the universe sees me? What if the creator of the universe, what if this God has called me? What if he says I'm significant? What if he says I'm chosen? What if he says I'm equipped? What if he says I'm powerful? What about what he says? And that's the mindset that David had, the mindset that says, what does God say? And I think we live in a world today and I think we live in a time that sometimes our mindset is about what everybody else says, what everybody else is doing. And it's very hard for our motivation to be his motivation when our mindset isn't his mindset. So David began to have this history with God. Man, if you wanna change your life, you've gotta change your story. And that's what David did right. Man, David could have written the worst story ever. He could have written this story about how he's just puny and weak and he's a victim and his dad doesn't pay attention to him and he's, and he's pushed aside, he's the runt of the litter. But instead, David created a narrative that said, in fact, I'm so special that the creator of the universe knows me by name. He knows the number of hairs on my head. That was the story that David created. And when David created that story inside of him, that story just continued to write itself. There were stories of when he took on the lion and the bear. There would be the story of when he would fight Goliath that day. There would be the story that when David became one of the greatest kings of all time that the world's ever known, there would be these stories because David would begin writing these stories in his mind. David would take that power back. And I think sometimes we let the stories of the past write our future. That's just the way it's always been. There's nothing I can do about this. Look at the odd, look at my family history, look at my history in this relationship, look at me in this work. I've worked here for 15 years and I've never been recognized. Why would I think, what if I got a promotion in 2021? I'm not getting a promotion, I've never been recognized. You have the power to build your what if. I, I was actually, I'm reading this new book and it's so inspiring and they, it has a lot of life stories in it. And one of the stories it was talking about was this, this yacht club. And, and back in, in 1951, it was a sailboating race. I think it's called the American Cup. And it's this big sailboating race. And from, from 1851 to 1952, 132 years, this New York Yacht Club held the title every year for 132 years. There was no competition. In fact, it was cited that the, that the Queen of England at that time said, well, who comes in second? And they laughed at the queen and they said, no one comes in second. It's just them, they're only first. So for years, no one even competed because this New York Yacht Club was obviously gonna win. They were gonna be the best. And then randomly, one year in 1983, a group of the ship called the Australian Two came in and they actually beat the greatest time ever by 41 seconds. That's a long time when it comes to a race. 41 seconds. And they asked them, what was y'all's secret? How did y'all beat the New York Yacht Club? They've been the winner for 132 years. People had stopped even competing because they knew they couldn't beat them. But their answer was, it started in the mind. They had to flip the story. The story had been that nobody could win because this one team would always win. But what they did is they actually went and they made a recording of the sounds of them winning. It was the sounds that it would take for their boat to go through the wind and the waves. And it was the sound of that over and over until they crossed the finish line. And it was the shouts of victory, the shouts of we won. And what they did is they gave everybody on the team this, this cassette tape, or I don't know, was it maybe a cassette tape at the time, that they would listen to this play over in their head and they had to play it twice a day, every day for three years. Finally, the day when the competition came and they went across that line, that wouldn't be the first time that they'd went across that line. They'd went across that line 2,190 times in their mind. They had seen the victory, they had heard the victory, they had written their story, and their story became their life. And church, I think we're in a season that we need to begin writing our own stories, 
writing our own narratives, not pulling the narratives from the past, the narratives from what someone said about you or your parents or your situation, not allowing ourselves to get stuck down in the season of like, what if this happens again? Why should I even try? But instead of God's calling us to make an impact, he's calling us to start asking the big questions. What if? Man, what if I take a step here? What if I change my mind, I shake off that negative thinking and I begin to decide my life based on what he says? What if my mindset becomes his mindset? What if my motive becomes his motive? What if my what if is inspired by his what if? And I, and I feel like in this season, that's what God's calling us to, is to start looking ahead to the future, getting excited. And I thought about the scripture that says, don't worry about tomorrow. It sounds kind of opposite of what I'm saying. I'm saying, think about tomorrow all the time. And this scripture says, don't worry about tomorrow. But I wanna target into the word that says, worry. Because I think when we fill in the blank in our what if line, I think we fill it with worry. I think we're not excited about tomorrow, we're worried about tomorrow. God doesn't want us to not think about tomorrow, he wants us to not be worried about tomorrow. And the best way to think about tomorrow is to be intentional about today. Intentional about our mindsets today. Intentional about our impact today. Sure, I wanna make an impact on the world around me, but I've gotta realize that impact starts in my car on the way home with my family. Impact starts small and then gets really, really big. That's how impact starts in church. I I think that's what God's calling us to, to a place where we're driven by impact. And I keep going back to this for the past few weeks of going back to the very beginning of my Bible in Genesis 128 when he's talking to Adam. It's, it's going back to the way that God intended this thing to be long ago. And he's telling Adam to rule his earth and reign and subdue it and fulfill it, to live this life and life more abundantly and make an impact on his world, an impact on everyone around him. That's what we're called to do. Our true happiness is at the end of when we begin making an impact because we're living in the fulfillment of God's life, God's plan for us. That's where impact is. That's where fulfillment is. That's where that life and life more abundantly is. Thank you so much for watching with us. I hope you enjoyed the message today. We always wanna give you an opportunity to be a part of what God is doing and there is always something going on around here to be able to sow into. So if you'd like to give, you can text LS Church to 77977 or head over to our website at lschurch.tv. Again, thanks for watching and we hope you'll join us again next week.